Uh, my name is Tomasz Rosensky. I'm a senior researcher and lead on European engagement at the European Space Policy Institute, which is a Europe's independent think tank for space. One of the key requirements to be considered as a global space power is owning and maintaining and operating a comprehensive set of, of credible world leading capabilities. On one hand, Europe can be certainly proud of a continued excellence uh, and innovation in, in really a range of uh, state-of-the-art capabilities, in particular when it comes to applications. So this is a meteorological observation in navigation or telecommunications and also in space science. At the same time, though, we have to say that Europe trail behind uh, in domains which stand really at the core of some of the other space powers, uh, notably uh, space exploration, uh, usage of space for security and defense um, uh, and launchers. Um, at present, you know, when we look at some of the hard numbers, Europe is investing uh, only 0.07% of its GDP per year on these activities. And this is also almost exclusively from the, the civil domain. And in the US, so when we compare this in transatlantic perspective, the US is investing 0.24% of US GDP. And in total numbers, this is almost five times the amount, uh, both through NASA and the defense sector. With this, I think we can argue that, that, that Europe until now has lacked really the political will at really at the scale of its economic power and, and talent to be a full-fledged um, uh, space power. The setup that we have in Europe uh, on uh, a funding space or how space policy and governance are organized is indeed quite complex, many layers with dispersed decision making in national capitals, uh, in European Space Agency, in, in European Union. And I think one really particular issue here is that while this is often misunderstood or considered as a weakness, uh, the diversity that we have in this European ecosystem could indeed be turned into a strength. And one issue that I would highlight as a particular one is that for now we have really struggled in Europe to have a common shared strategy and shared directionality in our approach to space. And I think this is indeed uh, uh, the key outstanding challenge for Europe on the way ahead to make sure that we leverage all that we have in a synergetic way and uh, synergetic implementation nationally through ESA, through European Union or all other frameworks, either multinational or multilateral or bilateral. I think it's most likely that this unique geopolitical disruptions of our time and uh, for Europeans in particular marked by the war in Europe or on the doorstep of the big European uh, uh, international organizations will have really an irreversible effect um, on Europe. We indeed right now are seeing a kind of a new quality of political engagement and more importantly, readiness to invest uh, in European autonomy, in the security of the continent and also in, in an economic resilience. So this is materializing and this new level of political dynamic, I think will act quite as a game changer also for the uh, for the space sector. We are already seeing this at the level of, uh, of policy documents, of new strategies, most notably adopted at uh, the European uh, Union level. Now, really, the challenge will be to also translate this um, into concrete into concrete actions. The, the way how uh, the role of space agencies is evolving, I think, really corresponds to what we are seeing as the kind of the underlying dynamics in the space sector. So on one hand, there is a historical role of space agencies that you know, they always have been the implementers of space policies. And they have been historically tasked with activities in the field of research, technology and innovation. Uh, I expect this to continue on the way ahead. Um, I also believe that uh, these big agencies will continue to engage in expensive large scale space programs because this is what is really needed to pursue these programs to have maybe more of kind of a centralized coordination or even centralized pursuit and, and kind of a delivery of individual milestones for those for those missions. But as the space sector is changing and we are seeing increased percentage or say growing perspectives of 
commercialization of the space sector at the same time also new trends in space for security and defense and the militarization i think one outstanding kind of a challenge for the civilian space agencies is to be how agencies can maybe strengthen and improve these commercial perspectives you know making sure that space is not only discussed within the space bubble but also in other sectors of policy and economy and this for instance also include the area of security and defense uh, and how can maybe civilian agencies stimulate and foster this natural connection um, uh, in space technology or so a natural feature of space technology is that it can serve both civilian and military needs. It is important to, to, to underline that when it comes to international collaboration, the transatlantic uh, partnership, the, the, the transatlantic bond between uh, uh, between the United States on one side and Europe and European countries um, on another side has been one of the one of the best examples and one of the most successful cases of uh, uh, how international cooperation can enable reaching ambitious objectives in space. You know, historically, NASA and ESA or NASA and uh, space agencies in Europe have been strong partners in many areas. Uh, and the examples that I can mention would be, you know, collaboration uh, in meteorology through NOAA and UMETSAT, uh, collaboration in uh, development of, you know, interoperability between our individual navigation systems, GPS and Galileo, or on countless of science and exploration uh, uh, missions. Um, and it is quite clear that within the communities, within the space communities across both sides of the Atlantic, there is a continuing interest to continue with cooperating on a transatlantic level and further deepening that collaboration.